All right, so let's derive arc cosine similar to arc sine. So we'll have the same domain, the negative one to one, because that's the range of cosine. So that'll be the domain of the inverse. And we have to restrict the domain again, because again, it's not one to one. So we're just gonna kind of go through, not a full cycle, but through all the options of one to negative one. So this one we're gonna, is gonna be different than sine. We'll just start at the top at one and we'll, until we hit negative one and now we've hit all the values. Because once I go here, now I fail. But if I only use this green piece, we pass the horizontal line test. So we're actually gonna restrict to zero to pi. So make sure you remember that it actually is different than sine. And then if we go ahead and make a reflection, um, we end up getting this graph. So if we want to reflect about y equals x, this will kind of go up there. This part will reflect up here. And we get this graph. It looks similar to um, arc cosine, arc sine. The graph isn't too important. But our cosine is the inverse, so sometimes we also write cosine inverse. And then it just means because x is cosine of y. So again, we're outputting angles. And the only big difference is the range. So my domain is the same, range is now 0 to pi. Otherwise, it's very similar. So let's evaluate a couple of these. Um, do not use your calculator because it doesn't give you exact values. So we're going to find exact values only. So avoid the temptation of using a calculator. So arc cosine of 1 half means when does cosine equal 1 half? So we'll go to that unit circle. So 1 half will be this way. So it'll be up here or down here. And then the domain was pi, 0 to pi. So the domain is, uh, the range is up here. The restricted domain of cosine or the range of arc cosine be 0 to pi. So we'll go ahead and pick this angle, which is pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 3 would bring me back to 1 half. All right, cosine inverse. This is the same as arc cosine, just two ways of writing it. Root 2 over 2, negative, will be on the left side. And then again, our range is only up here, 0 to pi. So we're going to pick the angle that's within the range. Um, what is this? 3 pi over 4? Right? 5 pi over 4 also gives this value, but it's not in the range. So 3 pi over 4. And then arc cosine of negative 1. So cosine is negative 1 over here, because it's the x value, and that would be pi. All right, let's try a composition of functions. Remember, compositions are like f of g of x. So my inner function is cosine inverse, and my outer function is tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle. Um, so we're going to draw a triangle of what co this would look like, cosine inverse of one-third. So this is basically saying cosine of theta equals one-third. So we have, I'm going to draw a triangle. Um, this is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is one, hypotenuse is three. And then I'll find the third side of the triangle, and then we can use that information to find tangent. So we're just finding, we're basically drawing theta, and then we can find tangent of theta. So the third side would be 1 squared plus b squared is 3 squared. You'll notice the book does this differently. The book heavily relies on trig identities, 
And I think drawing triangles is more intuitive. Um, you could feel differently. But I think drawing triangles is a lot more intuitive and I like it better. You can try identities if you prefer. But we'll get um, b squared is 8. So b equals the square root of 8, which we can review. We'll write that as 4 times 2. And the reason that's useful is we know the square root of 4 is 2. So b would be 2 root 2. So sometimes we can factor out perfect squares. And then this makes it really easy to find tangent. So this found our angle. We don't really care what the angle is because we're not solving for the angle. We're solving for tangent. So our angle is theta, and then tangent of theta will be um, opposite over adjacent. And that's it. So I really like drawing triangles. I think it's easier than dealing with identity after identity after identity. So I like this method. Let's try one more. All right. So we have sine inverse of 1 6, which means sine of theta equals negative 1 6. And then we want to find cosine of this same angle. So the only thing I'm going to do is put the angle down here for the negative 1. So this would be opposite. So negative 1. Um, negative 1 just means it's below the axis, x axis. And 6 will be my hypotenuse. So the, we're still kind of using the unit circle, um, the concept of it, but it's just this is 6 and not 1. But it's still the same concept. So let's go ahead and find the last side. So a squared plus negative 1 squared is 6 squared. So a squared plus 1 is 36. So a will be square root of 35, right? We get a squared is 35. A is square root 35. And I don't think that has any perfect squares, right? 4 went into 8. 35 doesn't have anything. And now we just find cosine of this angle. So we use the inner part to draw the triangle. And then we can find cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, root 35 over 6. All right, we might as well just finish up this page since it's a similar question. Um,